There are politicians in this country who seem to specialise in demonising those making the trips on the boats. We've got one here. Border force have been overwhelmed this morning. Um, a huge number of boats again today. We even found a vessel a few minutes ago with 13 people in it with no engine. 13 people simply with oars. I mean, this boat hasn't even got an engine. It's probably been stolen. They've got a lovely day. If the weather was to puff up, that would be the end of that lot. It is not an exaggeration to suggest that if we carry on as we are, it'll be 100,000 people that cross the English Channel this year, and 90,000 of them will be young men without any documents whatsoever. The boats, you can see, are much sturdier uh, than the previous ones we saw in the summer. This is not one of the really big ones, but be, ass be assured of one thing. They're going to keep coming throughout the whole of the winter. I mean, I would have thought having Nigel Farage patrolling those waters might be a big deterrent anyway, actually, without threatening Rwanda. But the point is that he does this constantly, demonising all of those who are risking lives to come over. What's your message to people like Nigel Farage? Um, uh, I mean, Nigel Farage built his entire career on scapegoating migrants. Uh, when I first came to the country, I remember him standing, standing outside these posters of breaking points. He had these massive posters mm -hmm. in the lead in the led to the referendum, um, um, which is, uh, to me, this is the route that I took. He used people from my country as for his propaganda. Mm -hmm. What really scares me, basically, not Nigel Farage, not, not, I don't care about Nigel Farage, what scares me is when Priti Patel uses that rhetoric, when Priti Patel skips migrants, the, 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 home, the home office secretary. She's using, basically, she's using us as, as pawns in her culture wars. Mm -hmm. And people are politicians. My message to the, to, to the politicians, do not play politics with people's lives. People don't, co don't come here for fun. They're not coming here for... You know, living as an asylum seeker is a crushing. At its worst, it's, it, it, it's really agonising. You live in limbo. You live in five pounds a day. You are not allowed a job. You can't access, you can't access education. I have, a friend of mine has been, in, has been waiting for, for his asylum for seven years. So people are, there are no pull factors. Britain isn't great, you know, and that's why that's the, I'm, I'm really I'm sorry. I'm so fired up, but this is too personal to me. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm Well, I just remember when you came and one of the first things you did when the pandemic happened was volunteer to go and work in a hospital on a COVID-19 ward when many health workers were dying. And that to me showed your gratitude to this country for what it had done by taking you in. I've, I've, I've done that, but, you know, I, I should be... I mean, I should, I, people should be dealt with respect and dignity mm. even without, without having to risk their lives and volunteering in, in COVID wards because it's, it's, mm. it's seeking asylum is, is, is our right, is our human rights, and it's enshrined in international law. And Britain now is breaking international law. Hassan, good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Mm.